I'm kind of nervous to look back at the videos, to be honest with you. I'm wearing false eyelashes in this video. What's up guys, it's McKenna. Ah! I was so disappointed. This was my first makeover. I was like so devastated actually. Oh my gosh, I got so much hate for my art that I painted. That was a great walk down memory lane. Hello guys, welcome back to Vlogmas. And it's totally nighttime when I'm filming this. Nighttime. So I have finally, finally finished the bedroom. You know, doing makeovers just take time. And you guys have had a behind the scenes look at how long, and this wasn't even really that long comparative to some of my other makeovers, but it was quite a lot. So the video is done. I just have to wait for final approval from the brand that I'm working with. And unfortunately, because of the holiday season, I don't think that that's gonna be very timely, which is pretty disappointing because I don't think that it's going to be going live on Sunday, but it is finished. I took some beautiful B-roll shots of it today and you guys will see it in a matter of days. So just whenever I can get everything like done, that's kind of like the business side of this whole thing. Sponsorships are really what keeps me creating this free content on YouTube for you guys. Uh, so they're kind of really important <laughs> also. So I'm really grateful, but it's not always like super timely. So it's okay. It's the holiday season. We're giving everybody a little grace, but I did finish the makeover today. All the like the prettier shots that I wanted to add in. And I realized it's still vlogmas. Oh, this one had this vlogmas has really taken its toll on me. Like time, time just gets away from me. I say nighttime, it's 4.30. It's 4.30 in the afternoon and it's pitch black outside. Well, almost, it's like getting there. I thought that we could do a cozy holiday night. We can make some hot chocolate because I have hot chocolate. I saw another last year, uh, not this year, but last year I actually saw, I don't know, was it this year? I don't know, see it's all blurring together. I saw another YouTuber, you know, kind of go back to like the beginning of her videos. And, <laughs> and was it this year? She went back to the beginning of her videos and just kind of like talked about <laughs> like more behind the scenes about it or more about that video or laughed at herself, really like roasted herself, honestly. And I have, n it dawned on me that I have never done that. Now I've been on YouTube for six years, creating content the way that I create content today for six years. And it also has evolved drastically from where I started to doing like small DIY projects in my house, in my, in our apartment, just on a very, very, very like thrifty, limited budget to start my channel and then growing to buying the cottage, of course, and then even growing to buying this house and just like where we're at, like six years, a lot changes in six years, you know? So I've never gone back to those beginning videos and I took a quick, gander i was like let me go to my oldest videos and let me i know i know what which ones were first tell you guys a little bit more context or reflect on them or roast on them a little bit because there are some that i hope i would have probably at this point just have hit the private button at this point i've never privated any of my videos or my projects because i think it shows growth I'm never, I'm never not proud of something that I did because obviously I did it, but have I evolved a lot and is it a little cringe to look back? Yes. But am I willing to do it with you guys? Of course, 1000%. So let's do that. Let's spend a cozy night together. Um, let's make some hot chocolate. Although I'm out of almond milk. We go through almond milk. Romeo and I go through almond, two things of almond milk this week. Um, I really need to go to like, the grocery store, but I think I'll go tomorrow. Ooh. And it has this cute little cup that I got from Home Goods. It's very cute. I've also done all my skincare and everything. Like I was getting ready to wind down and I was like, oh my God, it's Vlogmas. So that's okay. I mean, I've had hot chocolate a couple of times with just hot water. Um, so it's, it's not the end of the world. We'll use my cutie, my cutie little teapot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I never go back and watch my old videos unless I'm going back to like pull footage, but I have never found a need to go back and pull footage from a video prior to like the cottage. Like, to be honest, I obviously in the beginning of any like, you know, venture or business or something that you're trying to create, you're experimenting. And I think a lot of the beginning videos that I was doing was very much experimentation, figuring out, you know, what content I was gonna enjoy creating. And a lot of it was just projects I was already doing at my house. So I really hadn't discovered what my my style really was. That was actually something I just talked about on over on my podcast. I was like, you know, how I discovered my own style and the steps that I kind of took and hopefully those would help you too. So if you haven't checked out that episode, um, I'll leave a little clip in there in here for you. So let's just get into it and let's see where this goes. This is, these are videos on my main original channel that I started six years ago. And I'm completely self-taught in all ways. And I do have like a design background, you know, a design degree and a business background. And I have a, an extensive background and experience in marketing, you know, but this is all new. So like I'm, self -ta I'm self-taught in like editing and using cameras and photography and all of that. So I really just learned as I went and I, I really relied on Google and, I got better every time. And I think in the beginning, in my first year, I every month I would try and learn a new skill to make my videos better or my projects better, or I would invest in something small to make my videos better. So maybe that was like a, a lighting piece of equipment, or it was like a mic, you know, just to like every everything that I could do to make my content that much better, I, I would try. And I know what my first video was. It was a desk that I had that was black from Ikea. Very basic desk. It was my desk that I had, but I rarely worked from home uh, up until that point because I, you know, I had a corporate job. Fingers crossed. I don't know how this is going to go. I really hope that I don't mess up anything in my apartment or that my dog doesn't eat concrete. <laughs> Okay, wait, 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 wait. My voice is a lot higher than it is now. I still sound like me, obviously, but I was definitely not comfortable on camera. So my voice took a while to come back down to like reality and like sound like my real self. I also was not as comfortable on camera as I am now. Like I'm sitting here in front of you with absolutely no makeup on because I just, I don't care. I can't, I care, but you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm very comfortable in my own skin now. I'm wearing false eyelashes in this video. That's how not comfortable I was on camera. And I made this little intro, which I was actually really proud of for a while. <laughs> DIY concrete desk. I What's up guys, it's McKenna. Ah! I'm completely renovating my office slash guest room slash, slash storage room. It's pretty much a room that catches all the stuff that I really don't know what to do with. And I'm so excited about this project that we're gonna be doing today. I'm oh my gonna be God. using concrete. And that's not something that I've ever used before. So I'm super terrified and excited and slightly scared that I'm gonna ruin my floor, but it's too hot to do it outside. <laughs> okay, wait. You can hear in the background how bad the sound was at our apartment. I mean, we lived on a major street in Los Angeles, major street. So I would have to wait for the light, traffic light to turn red. I would have 35 seconds to film before the light turned green and then cars would like zoom by the front of our house and it would be so loud. The first like, what? I mean, I, we lived there for every bit of six years. So for the first couple of years of my channel, it was horrible. Like, filming was such a feat. Like it was so hard. I can definitely tell that I was influenced by YouTubers at that time. Like we all kind of sounded the same. And it wasn't until I kind of branched off and like to be just who I am. Concrete and white table. So let's get started. Okay, wait, that actually looks a lot like my inspiration. I commend myself on showing all of the materials. I mean, I definitely was leaning into like the tutorials back then. I don't, I, I quickly didn't want to do tutorials anymore. I wanted to just share my own projects and how I'm doing them because I never wanted to approach anything like I was an expert because I don't believe that that exists. I feel like people have just tried more things than other people. Yes, I have some like some experience in doing some things, but I feel like there's so many different ways to do so many different things that I wanted to do more of follow me along in this process if you happen to if you happen to find something useful. 
great. You know, so it, I got away from the tutorial based stuff a lot. Um, it just didn't, it didn't bring me joy. I didn't, that's not how I wanted to deliver my content, but I do commend myself from showing, for showing all the tools for sure. Okay, so this video is only five minutes and 44 seconds. I think that that might have been the shortest video I ever did. And I remember at the time my nieces were, God, this is six years ago. So they were like nine, 10 years old and they were like watching YouTube a lot. So I sent them the video before I posted it or maybe, maybe shortly after and I was like, tell me what you think. Like definitely criticize it. Like what can I do better? You guys watch YouTube all the time. Like blah, 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 blah. And I remember my niece Ava being like, maybe a little longer. Like it could be a little longer. I was like, okay, cool. I, I thought that that was really helpful, but overall I, I think it came out pretty decent for like my inspiration. So that was my first ever video, you guys. First ever video. If I didn't have such a high voice, I would say it, it wasn't, wasn't all that bad. Oh, and then I got very into macrame. Like when I say very in, I say very into macrame. Most of the projects that I did were very boho inspired at that time because that was really the style that I had. Oh, Kinsley, you're so cute. Ah! <laughs> I'm st I am glad that I'm still me in this because I thought I was gonna look back and be pretty different. I spent a lot of time on that macrame. You the voice. My first video where we transform a not so exciting IKEA table into a concrete and white desk for my office. You know that I'm completely renovating my office slash. Oh, I did a slash. I said that a lot. I remember like office slash guest bedroom. Blah 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 blah. I can't believe how short my hair was, but my hair was short for probably 10 years. I think all my corporate life, my hair was really, really short, even shorter than this. I've already started to grow it out. Um, and I think growing it out for me was like shedding the old me in a way like corporate my short hair and corporate felt so like stuffy and put together and professional. And I just, I wanted to free myself of that life. So obviously I've let, I'm have i gonna go get my hair cut though. I really wanna do it next week. Not short like this at all, like just a few inches off or so. But I was like definitely trying to shed that life. So that's, that's really funny. But I was really proud how this one turned out actually. On top of your guide strand, creating. Something that I worked really hard on on this video was trying to explain it well because I felt like there were so many macrame tutorials online that even I couldn't follow. And I really try, when I try and explain something, you know, um, in my videos, I try and make it just the most basic sense of the words to use. It's like, I want it to be as digestible as possible and not fill a tutorial or something that I'm trying to explain with a lot of words. I want to get like right to the meat or use references that help it make sense. I've always tried really hard at that. So I hope that that comes across really well. But this one, this one was, I'm still really proud of this project. I still have it. It's in storage, which we also need to go through my storage unit too. Oh, okay. So I did this DIY backyard game. What are we I, gonna make? I, I came up with this like series that I was hoping to keep doing, but it didn't do very well in the beginning and I kind of abandoned it. But it was a mystery challenge where I picked a- my voice. I've been wanting to do something kind of exciting and something that really challenges my creativity a little bit because I don't want it to be so planned and I want to try and really push the boundaries and see if I can actually come up with something when my creativity is really put to the test. So in order to really challenge my creativity, we are going to be doing a DIY mystery challenge. I'm excited and terrified at the same time, so you can be excited and terrified with me, but pretty much the rules of the game is I've created these two bowls, and one bowl is going to represent what I'm going to make, whether that be something for home decor, a stool, a chandelier. So a one was like the pillow, thing like that. that I would make. And then the yellow piece was of a material represent a very weird, unusual, odd, material that I have to use in making that home decor item or actually turn a really open. So I picked okay. a game, I think. We are going to make a backyard game. Yeah, like a backyard game. Okay. All right. Okay, we're gonna make it, now let's see what we're gonna make it out of. 
I, I know I picked cork. So I had that idea because I was like, you know, I just, I want to like branch out of like, uh, you know, I don't want to do something that everyone else is doing online. I want to try and just like challenge my creativity. And I felt like kind of like being forced to come up with something with limited constraints, like being able like, it has to be a game and it has to be made out of this material would really push me to be super creative and make something different or make my videos different. And I think I maybe did like three of these videos. Um, and so for this particular one, I made a backyard game in, in the shape of a cactus and you would throw, it was like a dart, dart game. It's cause the cork, I knew darts would stick into corks and it was actually really fun. What's up guys, it's ah! and Kinsley. And we oh, want to wish I did really, I really liked her costumes that year though. It's really like the projects were like fun DIY projects and I still really like them. <laughs> but my boys, I just, I couldn't get over it. Kinsley looked so adorable though. Look at that little girl. You were so cute. Okay, so those were the really, those were the older, like the, the beginning videos. I was growing my channel. I was probably at a couple hundred subscribers, you know, at the time. I, I think it took about a year for me to get to a thousand subscribers. And then it took about a year and a little bit for me to actually like monetize my channel and, um, you know, just tr try and make it into like a business so that I could do it full time kind of thing. And Romeo was on it a couple of times. We did ugly Christmas sweaters. It was like, it was super cute. I did some gifts. All of those were like pretty straightforward and fun. And then, and then we did like, we did some of like the viral ones at the time, like boyfriend does my makeup. And Romeo's just so funny that I knew like if we were gonna do something together, he was just gonna bring such like a, a fun. You love the snow. I think in this video, my voice is back, like somewhat back to norm, a normal state because I'm with him. And he always makes me, of course, really comfortable. And once I got in my head that I was gonna be the one editing the videos and I can make it into whatever I wanted. And if I didn't like the video, I could just like press delete. It made me a lot more comfortable. It wasn't like a live stream or anything. You know, I, I got a lot more, more comfortable with the camera. And then after about a year and a half having my channel, I had my first viral video. And that was when I did my first makeover on, a, on an actual space. And that was for my nieces. So it was for two teen girls and their room before was insane. It took days to just clean the room out because they, I mean, growing up in that room and like little girls, you know, they had crayons and gum and all sorts of stuff everywhere. So it definitely took some time, but this was the first time I had done any kind of like full space, but I was still operating on a really small budget. Okay, my voice is getting really normal. It's been a year and a half. All of their walls were painted a different color. Yeah, no, it was, oh, and Kinsley came with me. She went with me everywhere. They're so young. Oh my God. Oh yeah, they just outgrown their space. They had bunk beds. I wanted to give them just like their own spaces, but I was still operating on a really small budget. So I think I did this whole room for under like $250 or somewhere in there. Really inexpensive pieces on Facebook Marketplace. I had I had some things that I used. I reused some of their stuff and just like up, upcycled them, like their chairs and things. I was I was pretty proud even though this was the first time I had done a makeover. I had made them things for like Christmas and stuff that I could use in there. They already had the names and things. Oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> this. Okay, their names are Ava and Zoe. On each wall above their bed, I had mirrored the look of it, right? So I had Ava written down one way. And so on the other side, I wrote Zoe the same way, but really I didn't realize until after I got so much hate for it that it really, like if you read it like up instead of down, it read Eos. I got so much hate for that. I was like, really guys? Like, oh. I should have just put it the other way and I don't know why I, I didn't, but sometimes you just like step back from something or you have a different perspective and you see things differently. I got so much hate for it. I was so disappointed. This was my first makeover. I was like so devastated actually, but 
is really not a big deal, but they really love their space for sure. So that video went viral and I actually grew quite a bit on my channel from that video. And that just like triggered something in me to be like, okay, room makeovers work. I need to do more of these. I need to do, I don't know how, I don't know how many even have the money to do that, but I have to at least try and do them smart on a budget, but have a, a, you know, a space transformation. That started me doing more room makeovers um, on a budget and more rental friendly because obviously we were at an apartment that we couldn't make any major changes to but I could do some things like paint hang things on the wall, you know, like peel and stick things uh, So that started that whole Adventure on YouTube and me sharing those projects But it took a while for me to figure out what my style was truly to where we are today so in between I had to do other DIY projects just to gear up to do another makeover Save a little bit of money or find some things at the thrift store and stuff So it really wasn't until I did our bedroom Yeah, and I did two videos so I split it I did like DIY room decor because those videos were doing well for me and then I did an extreme bedroom makeover and I put up this wallpaper I put it up and I remember liking it for a minute and then I instantly hated it. I feel like if I followed any trends or I did something because just because it was cheaper, I ended up not liking it really quickly. Oh my gosh, I got so much hate for my art that I painted. What's up guys, it's McKenna. My voice is still a little hi. So we, up until this point, Romeo and I still had the same furniture and the same things that I had from my first apartment in college. So this was like a, a cheaper version of something that I actually really wanted to do. The house that my parents are currently in still, uh, they have this really beautiful natural grass wallpaper. I think it's a grass. It's like a bamboo, like reeded. It's really beautiful. Now it has a lot of warm tones and it's real. And it was like very expensive wall. Like it's very high end wallpaper. This was like a, a digitally printed cheaper peel and stick version of that. But eventually I got over it and I wasn't very into it, um, but it came off easy. We just peeled it. I mean, at one point it was actually already kind of coming off um, because we left the windows open a lot. And I think that just like being exposed to like more elements and stuff, it just didn't really last. This was the same bed that we had that we just took out of our bedroom. And it was the one that I kept having to fix. Like I think over time, I, I got it for really cheap on Wayfair. And I think over time it just like started to like separate from the legs and stuff and just being used a lot. So it was time for us to get a new bed for sure. Oh, okay, and then I painted this wall art and <laughs> I really wanted it to look like torn canvas that was on a canvas. Um, and I thought I accomplished it pretty well. I actually really liked it. And it was like, people had like a love-hate relationship with it. They either loved it like I did, or they thought it was a black hole over your bed. And they were just like, what is that? I loved it. I think it, I accomplished exactly what I wanted to accomplish. I also painted those too, uh, and had those forever. I think I still have those in storage too. Oh, I built my nice, literally all of this stuff we still had. So it lasted us. We just kind of like manipulated you know the design around these pieces so I built those were my, that was my first ever wood project was those nightstands and I think for my limited knowledge I did a pretty decent job but I screwed in to the top of them instead of using any kind of like like hidden um, joining system or hidden screws and they just like literally it was it just didn't look very professional that actually I was on such a tight budget I'll tell you something that tree is mine, but that um, blanket ladder, I knew I needed something in that corner and I couldn't afford it. But I knew everyone online would tell me I needed something in that corner. So I borrowed that ladder from my friend Kristen and she brought it to me and she let me borrow it for the video and I gave it back to her. That's how like tight um, we really were on things and we were just trying to reuse as much as possible. But that was a really pretty ladder that she had. And then I started thinking, I was like, if I could do one makeover, 
room makeover every month, I can really create that content that people are enjoying because they were responding really, like everyone loved like the makeovers and that was what I was getting the most views on, which obviously was gonna help the channel grow and turn it into a business and all the things that I dreamt of having. So I was like, okay, if I can pull it off, it'll be great. So I did one for my friend, I did her room and did some DIYs there. I did my living room, all still just trying to experiment with my own style too. Oh my gosh, this video. Okay, this video, thrift flip home decor on a budget. This video has 2.4 million views. I'm horrified that this video got so many views. I was horrified then. I was so sick filming this video. And this was the time when I was like, I would rather fall over and die and it, uh, rather than miss a weekly upload. Like I was so, it was so important to me and I was so, and I was so sick during this video that I just, I had to finish it. I had to make it through. So I wasn't proud of these DIY projects totally. And I feel like if I put more to, I don't know, I was just really, really sick. So I went to the thrift store and I up, upcycled some things like some soap dispensers and things for like in our kitchen and this chair. I got, it's quite a bit of hate for attempting to reupholster, even though I feel like everyone has to try something once, you know, like reupholstering is pretty difficult. And I, I thought I did a pretty decent job for trying to save something from the thrift store. And I still have the chair today, but I was like, of all the videos, that one, <laughs> that's the one that gets the most views. Why, why is the universe doing this to me? I'm like, there were so many other videos that I was not sick and I was not like struggling just to make it through. People asking about, you know, like cleaning chairs and being super freaked out about it. I feel like that was when thrift shopping was just starting to become popular in terms of a mainstream type of way. People really concerned with buying like, you know, furniture and, and just secondhand goods in general. So I tried to share some ways that I, I clean my stuff. Um, and I thought it was all pretty decent until it went viral. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. But I found some pretty fabric and I, I reupholstered it and I thought it looked pretty decent and I kept it for, I still have it today. But I don't know, people hated the way that I reupholstered it underneath. I just, they hated the way I did the back because I pleated it. I didn't know how else to gather some of the fabric that I used the the, the thumbtacks, the not the thumbtacks, but the, the furniture tags. It was like a whole big deal. The back of it was like a whole big deal for people. At this time, I was making some money from my YouTube channel. Uh, so I was having a little more, more budget to actually do videos. Because prior to this, I would really only spend about hopefully nothing to about 30 to $40 per video because we were on a very, very tight budget because I had left my corporate job and I was really trying to make a business work. And so if I could do a project or a room makeover for one of my friends, they would kind of invest the money and I could have the content, but I would do all of the work for free, you know, so that we'd get, you know, like the pretty space, but then they would either have the stuff already that I could repurpose or they would buy a few things for their space because they would get to enjoy it after. And I got really, this was the time when I got really into thrift shopping, really into flea markets. Oh, I did um, my patio. This was my first major wood project. Patio. <laughs> the patio was really sad, <laughs> but this was my one of, this was like my first really like intense wood project where I've, really tried to figure out how to build something substantial and I made patio chairs for us. And they're so cool. I actually left and we, when we moved from the apartment, I left them there for the rest of the tenants to enjoy because they were they used them a lot more than we did. Um, and they had had a lot of wear and tear over the years. And I was just like, it's okay, we don't need to take them. And then we started to get into some room makeovers that I actually really, really loved. I started to get more daring with my design choices and, um, really started to see things a little differently or just push myself design wise, like our extreme living room makeover. Um, I really, really loved that was when we got a new couch and we were kind of leveling up, you know, our furniture. We weren't just using what we had before. And then also our breakfast nook. Now this was the first time that we were getting into like my mom painting art for me. 
I was getting more into the ornate frames and more of a vintage style. Doing projects a little more how I do them now. But I really, I really loved how the space came out. I, I still love it today. And I have all of that art that my mom painted going down our staircase and in the dining room. I still have the dining room table for now in there. Once the pandemic hit, it got really, obviously really difficult to do projects. And I had done every room in our apartment, essentially. I had done the kitchen, the living room, the entryway, the outside space, my office, and our bedroom, and our bathroom, twice. And most, most of the spaces twice as I like my design evolved. I was really concerned about how I was going to have content. I was really concerned about how I was gonna keep my business going, creating content and how I was making money, you know? So I was like, okay, I have to do something. So we ended up driving back to Texas and we were kind of just exploring the area when we saw some houses for sale. And that started the, just the planting the seed of like, could we actually buy a house and me have something really positive to put my energy into during this crazy time in the world? And could I actually have content? And like, could this be something? So it was really, it wasn't, I wouldn't say super spontaneous, but like how the seed was kind of planted in my mind. And of course my mom and my dad were like totally on board because that would mean, you know, I would be back in Texas because we, couldn't afford a home in California. And I was like, well, I could afford, it was at the lower part of the market. We got a great deal on the cottage. And so it was It was before the, the upswing in people really buying houses during the pandemic. So we did it. And it was the most exciting, um, just transformative. Like I got to learn so much through the process of the cottage and I'm still learning so much through the process of the cottage, but also the most stressful, the most emotionally draining because I had literally uprooted my entire life during the pandemic to go to Texas and be apart from Romeo and to pour myself into the most physically demanding job ever. You know, so you guys, of course, a lot of you guys started following me during that period and during when we found the cottage. I know it was such something that I was supposed to do and such something that we are supposed to own and still finish. And I'm so grateful that we did it because I would not have the level of skill that I have today if I didn't buy the cottage and have to actually throw myself into that type of project in a time where we couldn't get materials, we couldn't get tradesmen, I had to be really crafty with like materials and saving and salvaging. It taught me so much about what I value by having like, if I already bought it and I bought all this wood on the wall and all this molding, I already paid for this. I'm gonna try and reuse it as much as I can. And then what I was able to create from that material and for those projects made my projects so much more interesting. The cottage taught me so much. And it's just, it's, I'm so, so grateful. I'm so, so like happy and glad we made that decision because it, it was really a way to keep my business going and growing. And it gave me a passion project and it got me through a really difficult time during the pandemic. Um, and it was just, it was totally, totally worth it. And I'm so proud of how it came out most of the, and there's still work to be done. And, and I would, I would say we're 80% done with the, with the cottage because all we have are the two bedrooms and the bathroom and the laundry left. Um, but the main part of the house is, is completed. We have a little bit of work outside as well with like the railings and stuff, but it took so much out of me for those two and a half years, you know, that I just needed to slow down a little bit and take a step back, but I'm so, so grateful. So that's very much those, those I really don't really need to go through. <laughs> I have all of the cottage videos in a playlist together. So if you missed, you missed any of the cottage from the very beginning to even us touring homes and finding that home and doing all the demo and oh, all the stresses that we had that first year with so much rain and not being able to get tradesmen. So it really forced me to do the majority of the demo myself, if not with the help of my dad. And when Romeo was there, obviously, but we were still in that phase of like, um, he, you know, he had to work too. And it was, it was, it was a very odd time. That was a great walk down memory lane. <laughs>
Um, that was, it, it's so crazy because looking at those videos back, it literally feels like yesterday that that happened, that I did those projects. It feels like it just was a day or two ago. And I remember them so vividly. Like I remember sitting in the places that I was sitting and working on those little individual DIY projects, but it is six years ago or five years ago. And, and just seeing how far my own style has come and how much I've grown as just a, a des designer and a creator is, is pretty, pretty wild. Um, but I'm just so happy that that day I just like took a chance, you know, and, and was like, well, you know, maybe if I'm doing these projects already, maybe someone else would enjoy it too. Or maybe someone else wants to do projects in their own house and this will inspire them to do so. And that was literally the thought I had in 2017. And what started was just that with that one concrete table grew into me looking over at this bedroom and seeing this space that I've just created now and the confidence that I had in designing that room and the confidence that I wouldn't have had six years ago. I'm so glad that I started this journey, you know? So thank you guys so much for being along on this crazy journey. If you've been here from the beginning, please let me know, comment down below, like what was the first video that you found me from? Was it before the cottage or, or during? I hope it just has inspired you to just like work on your own projects and create your own sense of home, um, whether whether it is or isn't the same style as me, you know, just in your own way. But well, this was fun. Thanks guys for this day of Vlogmas. I'm so sorry it's gonna be uploaded so late because it's literally going live today because that's where we're at. Um, and then I'm gonna get this bedroom makeover up for you guys as soon as humanly possible as soon as i hear back you guys will see it i'm so proud of it so i'm really excited for you to see how the color came out and all the pieces that i found and everything kind of collectively together it's a, it's a really really beautiful space so stay tuned i'll keep you posted but even if there won't be that video tomorrow on sunday i'll still have vlogmas so we're still gonna do fun stuff i, I want to do the rest of our like patio lights outside still have to put the lights in the bow on this tree we'll do now that i'm done officially with the with the bedroom we can do all of that other fun holiday things so Kinsley, you gonna say bye to everybody? You're so sweet. You were in the videos with me from the very beginning. I started my channel six months after I got Kinsley. She's six now, she's six years old. That's crazy, that's so crazy. Bye guys. <laughs>